A member will be pleased to know that the subordinate courts complex will be the first of its kind in this part of the world. And every effort is being made by the authorities concerned to provide a building of grandeur and dignity. Number one, Havelock Square. This is the very seat of justice. A place where thousands come in each year to settle disputes, resolve conflict, and to see that fair justice is upheld according to the laws of Singapore. This is the State Courts of Singapore. Did you know that the District Courts, Magistrates Courts, Coroner's Courts, Juvenile and Maintenance Courts used to operate from different parts of Singapore? As early as 1963, the government recognised the need to centralise these courts in a single complex. Construction of the new centralised court building at Havelock Square began in January 1973. And in September 1975, the building was completed and ready for use. At the time of completion, the building housed 26 courtrooms over an area of 30,600 square metres. The State Court's building's architecture has many unique design elements, all of which contribute to the one mission, to provide greater access to justice for all. This is Mr. Sunny Chen, one of the key men responsible for the design of this building. The brief calls for 24 courts and the design concept came quite naturally. The octagonal atrium actually is the organiser of the whole building. The octagon has eight sides, so we use six sides to radiate the courts and the seventh and eighth side actually is the entrance to the courts. It brings daylight into the heart of the building. So actually, when you are inside the complex, you don't feel you're not walking in a corridor. You're always aware of daylight. The design of the building revolves around facilitating the circulation and movement of the three key groups of people, public, judiciary and remandis. Circulation became the design generator for form-making and spatial organisation which added gravitas and presence, fitting of a public institution as important as the state courts. When I first entered the building, I was very impressed with the layout of the courts. First of all, all the courts were centralised within one building. And uh, the security and the arrangements for the judges were excellent. The judges have a separate passage from the car park to their respective chambers. Likewise, for the prisoners, they have their separate passage where they can be brought to the respective courts through the private passageway. When you look at the subcourts, I mean, the subcourts do hold your attention that it's just not any other building. It's a left an indelible mark in my memory uh, to do a building like that. Today, the State Court's building's unique, non-directional, formal geometry continues to stand out amongst all the other buildings in the bustling Crater IA area. But it is not just the architecture that makes it stand out. Mr Lee, could you tell us a bit about the background of PWD's involvement in the construction of this building and also what were some of the challenges you faced in the process? PWD then was already a long-established government institution uh, with architects, engineers and other building professionals responsible for all government building development uh, and infrastructure. In this particular case for the uh, state courts, the PW team actually worked with a private sector architect, Kampulan Architects, and the team actually manages the whole process of the implementing of the project, supervise the construction to completion. I was part of the team at that time, I was very fortunate. And uh, I think there were many challenges at that point in time. I think one of the things is actually the coordination of the mechanical and electrical services. Air conditioning system, the security system, the fire protection system and so on. The complexity at that time uh, is quite 
new to both consultants and contractors. Uh, I think we managed to uh, complete it, uh, overcome all these problems. And I think PWD as a whole was very proud of uh, this particular project. The design within each courtroom also has been carefully designed and planned specifically with court proceedings in mind. The layout of the courtroom, the judge's bench and the bench for the legal fraternity, it was done on a sort of a circular format. Uh, the idea was that they did not want to emphasise the, the adversarial role of the, of the conflicting parties between the lawyers. What we came up with is actually a layout which is, uh, first of all, I think it gives a sense of dignity to the courtroom. But at the same time, it actually facilitates a very good interaction among the various parties, the judges, the, the accused person, the witness, uh, and the prosecution. Finishes of the uh, courtroom has actually taken a lot of uh, consideration, particularly on acoustics, because uh, we do not want to have any uh, unnecessary noise or echo in the, in, in the courtroom. So you can see that the finishes, the, uh, the ceiling, the, the wall panels and even the floor finish are all chosen to facilitate good acoustics in the courtroom. Since the opening of this building in 1975, thousands of people move in and out every day. The special thought and design that went into the construction of this building made it a very special experience for all who stepped through its doors. When we moved to the new court, of course it's a great change. There it is, a spankling new building, well illuminated, air conditioned, space enough for everybody under one roof. During the period of the move, there were no hearings and the courts were not functioning except for Court 26. Court 26 was functioning or was on the standby to deal with cases where persons have been arrested and not put on bail. And under the CPC, they have to be produced in court. When I first stepped into this building, it gave me the idea that this building looks very beautiful. To me, it is entirely um, a change compared with those days that I had that I was working in the old building. The building here was so different from the old one. The old ones was just like horse shed and cow shed. Whereas when I shifted here, it has changed to a so different environment and the ambient all changed. With an increased caseload in the 1980s, more courtrooms were added to the building from 1986. And by 1993, there were 40 courtrooms and 28 hearing chambers. Over the years, other changes were made to the State Courts building to meet the growing caseload and increasing types of services to court users. The court caseload started to grow over the years. The building also evolved to meet those needs. The first thing that the public uh, litigant would see would actually be the info counter as they entered the main door. And that was critical. In fact, that hasn't changed all this time. That signified the importance of the state courts allowing people to have access to justice, giving them proper signposting, and we reinforced that further over the years by also introducing a colour coding scheme around 2009 or 2010, I believe, that we refurbished the atrium to allow for members of the public as well as lawyers to gather around the atrium, to use the atrium as a meeting place of sorts, and also in line with uh, meeting the growing needs on our court system, we refurbish the number of areas on the ground level particularly. Every day, thousands of people come through the doors of the state courts. That's why we strive to ensure that we deliver a fair and effective system of justice to every court user. As the jurisdiction of the state courts expands over the years, and the demand for court services continues to rise and evolve, the existing State Courts building will no longer be able to support the court's future needs. Hence, in 2011, a decision was made to construct a new State Courts complex. 
The new state courts complex will have over 60 courtrooms and 50 hearing chambers, a substantial increase from the current facilities here to meet the court's future needs. But as such an important part of Singapore's post-independent history, this iconic building will retain its original architecture and will be retrofitted for the use of the family justice courts. The idea is that to try and... I think it's uh, part of the conservation or heritage that uh, they would like to keep this as a, you know, not necessarily in an original state, but when, when they revert to the family court, that the renovations will not uh, sort of uh, kill the spirit of, of the building and also the spatial qualities of the building. On the 10th of July 2013, the State Courts building was officially gazetted for conservation. I'm really glad that the history, stories and heritage of this building can continue to be preserved within its walls because this building has established itself as a landmark in Singapore, as a place where justice is not only done, but is seen to be done. We are putting up a building which will be with us for a long time.